Lord, I do. We lift our hands and bless you, Lord. I give you praise, our King. Tell me about the time I have because I'm about to get caught up in something. 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not working, but the word will. Here is okay, here is the thing. Let me let me just jump right into something. When God created Adam, when God created Adam, it says He made the man in His image and in His likeness. He formed his body from the dust. I don't want you to think of the word form like your hand sculpting something. Think of the word cast. He cast His image. And what that means is, is in those days, he caused a mist to come over the whole face of the earth. And the whole face of the earth was covered. And in those days, the topsoil in the earth was probably six, seven feet deep. It was before sin entered. And so in that time, a mist covered the earth. On Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, the scripture said God planted everything that had seed within itself on that day. 
On that day is when God stepped out into the midst of the glory that he, he covered the earth with. And he laid down in that topsoil. And he laid down about six feet underneath. And he cast his image there. Where no angel could see. Nothing could see this. This was a mystery hidden in God. And then when on day three days and nights later on day six. He goes back to the same spot and he begins to uncover the ground. When he uncovers the ground, he gets to his cast. And it's like he has an open grave he's looking at. And Adam is laying like this, Adam. And he laid down on top of him. Scripture said he shadowed him. Put his hands on his hands and his eyes on his eyes. He inhaled and caught up Adam's spirit within his breath. And he breathed into his nostrils his spirit. And when he did, the man became a living soul. And when he became a living soul, God raised him up out of that hole. And he stood him in front of him. So on three days and nights later, from Genesis 1-11 to day 6, that was on day three to day six. Three days and nights later, he prophesied the resurrection that would come. And he prophesied this on that time. He was showing you that one day he would become flesh and die and be buried. And after three days and nights that he would be raised from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus was prophesied on the day Adam's body was cast into the earth. So man is a prophecy. Man was a prophecy from the mouth of the Almighty from the very beginning. Are you with me today? He was a prophecy. There was a spirit in the earth, a rogue spirit at that time. How, how am I going to do this, Lord? As fast as I can, he said. <laughs> Here it goes. So on that, when the earth was created, God did it this way. Everything the Bible said that, that in, when He laid the foundations of the earth, that the, the angels, the sons of God in the book of Job, shouted for joy. They didn't just shout for joy. They, they, it doesn't mean they were excited. They set the earth in frequency and harmony. And so everything has a harmony and a frequency in the earth. When the Lord returns, He returns with a shout, with the trump of God. He returns to match the frequencies in the earth. And so when God got ready to create everything, there was this anointed cherub who walked up and down in the stones of fire. And when He walked in these stones of fire, His job was this. He would see a revelation and he would take that bright revelation and he was a living instrument. Inside his chest was tambourines, timbrels. He had shofars built into his being and he would lift himself up into the center of the earth and he would sing the revelation. And when he would sing, the earth's frequencies would shift for what God was making to come to pass. And the day came, he's walking up and down in the stones of fire, and he finds the revelation of you, of the man that would come, of the cast God would make. And he went to the court of heaven and he said, What is this man that you're mindful of? Or well, the son of man that you had visited? You made him a little lower than you. And so when he did this, all the angels in heaven, the eighth psalm was a was a conversation of a court case in heaven. Hebrews 2 said it was an angel protesting. David being a prophet heard it and wrote it down. And so he left the court of heaven and left the angels aghast. They couldn't believe that this certain, this, this cherub would dare challenge the Almighty in the courtroom of heaven. So he walked away. And they're standing staring at him. But the day came when it was time for him to sing the song of the man. And he, he didn't sing it about the man. The earth gathered ready to hear the song. Are you with me? Yes. And he lifted himself up to the center of the earth. 
and the timbrels began to beat and the shofar started to play. And when he opened his mouth to sing, all the creatures in the earth, all the earth was ready to hear. And he sang the song about himself. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He didn't say, I'll be God. He said, I'll be like Him. He wanted your position. He wanted to be a man. But He couldn't be a man. But since the revelation was from God, and He sang the song, He sowed a hybrid seed. For you know as the seed of the serpent. And so when Adam was finally created and the serpent did what he did, God brought back the whole knowledge of that time. And He said, the seed of the woman will crush your head. Your seed will be crushed under her seed's foot. Prophesying the crucifixion. And so it was revealed right there. It's only Christians that don't know this. <laughs> God prophesied it as if everyone knew it. And he never asked, could he do it or not? I'm going to tell you something that happened after that. In the earth, a war began. And everything's been about that seed. Everything's been about the seed of the serpent trying to come into the earth. If we had time, I could tell you what was just done in governments to bring that seed into this earth. The lake you're on right now is a lake of great miracles, is it not? The sea is a sea of great miracles. Think about everything that happened here. Something like 23, 24 miracles. Just here, around here. This is also known of, under another title. Galilee's Circuit. It was known as the Heathen Circle. A lot of people don't know that. It was known as a Heathen Circle. It's because not far from here the Rephaim lived. It wasn't far from here the Zuzim lived. The Amalekites were there. The giants were here. And the day Jesus came to this place, and He made His way from Nazareth to Galilee, it was as if He came and openly challenged. It was like here, all of the, all of the fallen, all everything tried to settle right here. Have you not ever wondered why His ministry was just here? Mostly here. Because he came in and challenged everything. He came in and challenged it all. He turned the water into wine. Where? In Cana of? The next thing you see him doing is speaking to winds and waves. Where at? The next thing he's walking across it. And it's all here. And when he started to go deliver the demoniac, remember? The man was crying, God help me. That's what he was crying in the tombs day and night. Deliver me. Why was it here? It's because here, remember when the spirits left the man, they said, don't send us out of this country. It's because it was settled here. This was the disputed ground from the fall. From the fall of man, this was the disputed place. And so Jesus came to this place and opened warfare against the seed of the serpent. And He came in and challenged everything. And when the spirits left the man, the pigs ran into the... Where is that? Here. And He would say, let's go here. Let's go there. Let's do this because he came to the disputed heathen circle. This was a ground God fought for. This was a ground that was seized at the fall. And so the, the seed of the woman had to come and do battle here. 
And this is what you're floating on right now. Is where El Gabor, Jesus the body warrior, came and did battle. He knew what he was doing here. No wonder when he went across this sea, this lake, the storm kicked up and tried to kill him. It's because the spirits were all in this region. And he stood up and said, Peace! Still. Everything calmed down. Remember when he walked on the water? Where did he do that? <laughs> what did the disciples look out and say? It's a what? Because it was a region of sorcery. They knew it was the disputed land. He had to take this ground. Come on. <laughs> and the seed of the serpent trying to push into the earth. But the seed of the woman he crushed his head. But listen to this. When he was on the cross, remember what he said? In Psalm 22, perfectly tells the story of his crucifixion. And he said on the cross, strong bulls of Bashan have come past me round. That runs its reference all the way to Goliath. He's talking about the spirits that made the Nephilim. He said, they've come past me round. And then on the cross, he began to pray something in other tongues. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. There was Hebrew speaking people standing there, Latin speaking people standing there, Greek speaking people standing there. But it had to be interpreted because no one understood what he meant. And he said, it was my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's praying the 22nd Psalm where he said, they pierce my hands and feet. They cast lots for my garments. They do, And he perfectly describes the crucifixion. But he had to pray it in other tongues because he, he prophesies the 22nd Psalm all the way through in other tongues because it says he's going to die, be dragged out of his body. He's going to do this and then he'll come back and praise you and God in the great congregation. He was talking the whole crucifixion and Satan couldn't understand a word of it because he was praying in the tongues. is true. And so it was a mystery hidden in God. So he was praying the tongues of mystery. And he was praying and praying and praying. And then you know how, how the 22nd Psalm ends in the Amplified Bible? It is finished. That's how it ends. Then he goes into hell and pays the price with our sin. He who knew no sin became sin. He didn't carry sin. He became our sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And He descended into hell and He paid the full price for Adam's treason. And after three days and nights, remember, after three days and nights, Hebrews 1, 6 took place. The Lord called down into that pit and said, Thy throne, O God, is forever. Let all the angels worship You. And when He did, the Holy Ghost stormed down into the pits of the damned. And He's streaking through hell. And the Bible said the Holy Ghost raised Him and the glory raised Him. So He's going down into hell, hunting the Beloved. And when He finds Him there, there's still the emaciated Spirit who died with our sin, who's carried our whole sin he laid down on top of him the spirit of God did and breathed into him like the first Adam and raised him up from the pits of the down he came out he came out listen can't you see that Satan would have said you can't have him you can't have him that sin can't you see that sin and then the mystery was revealed yes it is sin but it's not his sin it's their sin he comes out because he never committed
do the works that I did. You do. So now you and I are anointed to take the challenge. He took the stronghold here on the Galilee. He took it. So now you can go into all the earth and take every stronghold that the enemy has.